and, and God says that if they are they are able to 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 deal, if they are able to 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 tolerate your salvation, He says He is supposed to wait and pray for them, because the Bible says your holiness will purify them, and in the end you can win them to salvation. And then those who enter the world of that. Good morning everyone wherever you are from. They said it is a good morning. How are you? My name is Nantesa Dorothy Faith. I'm from Uganda, East Africa, and it's a good morning. <laughs> it is a good morning here. But I want to put my baby to sleep. This is my nephew, he's called Yaman. And I want to put him to sleep because I, I need to wash his clothes and prepare for him baby food right now he is nine months yeah ma yeah ma <laughs> yeah ma i want to put him to sleep so i'm going to show you how we put our babies to sleep the african way like we put them on the bag and we soothe them to sleep how do you do it in your country? Tell me how you do it. Please comment down below how you do it in your country. <laughs> yes, we are going to put baby Yama to sleep right now. We are here. Sometimes I bring him out in the morning and to I want him to connect with the mother nature, our African land, our nature, our breeze. Like we are here in the garden and yeah. See, you can see the banana plantations. So we are just here in the garden. So let's put him to sleep. It says anymore that is wrong for this to be this way. It's just because they are dead to that light. But when you become born again, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Nobody tells you that you have the right to do the life because the laws are written in your heart and in your mind. When you know, in fact, when a believer can do something and not feel remorse, all right? For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And justification is simply free, but then that doesn't take away the fact that you and I have, you know, messed up. You have messed up. People mess up. People mess up. But I'm saying, but is that? Thing, there's that person in you that tells you, mm -hmm, here, yeah, no, that's not you. Okay? That doesn't need to be read. But David needed to be told that he has killed a man and taken his wife. Because he was a man of another covenant. Right? But now these things are written on you. So there's the knowledge we have. When you walk out of that, you know it. When you do good, you know it. The judgments that are built in the spirit because you carry the word of God, Christ in the hope of glory, right? But there's a place where the mind must be renewed in the reading of the word, right? Because the mind needs a constant reminder of the things that are in the spirit. But I want you to remember that the things you read are already in the spirit. Paul says you are written on the pencil known and read by us and he says and you are manifesting all right you are manifesting you, uh preached or ministered by us you are ministered by us you are ministered by us so when we preach christ we're actually preaching you because you and christ are one he is in you and you are in him all things that are of christ if christ is good we're speaking about you in that goodness which is in Christ. When we speak of divine help, we're speaking of that help which is in Christ. That the communication of your faith might be in first chapter of one six, through the acknowledging of every good thing, okay, which is in you, which is in Christ. All right, which is in you, which is in Christ. In Christ. You see? So, when, 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 when he says no man shall teach, it's because there are things you don't know. So as a preacher, I want, I, want, I want you to help you understand. I want to help you understand 
that as a minister of a preacher or a teacher right now speaking and speaking the things that your spirit knows that your mind is connecting to. Alright? And if as a minister I can't do that, and I can't have a forum, then you will not tune in next Sunday. And there's a reason why you tune in constantly. It's because I'm speaking things that in your spirit you have an or you have a knowledge or an affirmation of or some of them you might have not known them in your mind. But when I speak them, they sort of put a certain switch in your spirit. They are, hmm, that, that that is it. But you can approve them as true. Your conscience bears witness. Like Paul said, my conscience bears witness to the Holy Ghost. And you, if you are of the Holy Spirit, when I speak to you, there are things that connect to you. They might be hard, they might be complicated, they might be even contrary to what your mind knows. But if you're born of God, there are things that invite you, there are things that you connect to. All right? So it says, no man will teach. It says, first of all, be merciful to their unrighteousness. All right? And their sins and their iniquities are remembered no more. Now, I, I, this, this, this is what I want to put emphasize. Paul added, Hebrews 8, right? Verse 13, he added, In that he said, right, a new covenant. In that he's saying that there is a covenant that renews and refreshes every time. He says, And he hath made the first old, right? He has made, he has paused it. It has no power to renew. It has no power to refresh. It has no power to restore. It has no power to rebuild. That's why I feel sorry for people who are under the law. Because they're reading something that will never renew them. They're reading something that will never re restore them. They're connecting to something that will never refresh them. So that means the works, you know, boom. And he continues to say, now, uh, listen to the, to, the, to, the, to the language. That which he created and works of old is ready to vanish away. What is the fact? The Old Testament. When he makes the old old, and he says this one will no longer refresh, renew, um, uh, rebuild, restore, he's saying, now listen to the rendering. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, the, 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 now that which decayed and works of old is ready to vanish away. Because the Old Testament, the old, is in a constant life of decay. It's in a constant life of oldness. Give me number five of eight thirteen. He says, in, in that he said, when God speaks of the new covenant or an agreement, number five says, he makes the old one obsolete, out of use. You cannot use it. You can't use the law to renew men. You cannot use the law in church to get rid of sin. You cannot use the law to heal the sick. You cannot use the law to rebuild ministries. You cannot use the law to restore because they're like a killer. And he says, and what is obsolete, he continues to say, out of use and annulled because of age, is ripe for disappearance and to be dispensed with all together, to be dealt away with. That means God delivers you every other second. It's clear in the administration of the law. And strengthening and upholding and rebuilding the ministration of grace, the newness of the spirit. You know what that means? Imagine if a pastor builds his ministry on the foundation of the law. <laughs> Imagine if a minister builds his church on the foundation of what God has regarded out of use, of what is obsolete. Of what is waxing old, of what is decaying. That means he will see decay in his ministry. Many pastors are seeing stagnation in their churches. But not only in their churches, their members are stagnant. The marriages of their members are stagnant. 
the finances of their members struggling, even as they are struggling. The health of their members is bad because they are submitting to what is decayed, what is waxing old. You, they cannot build a ministry on that. You can't. Now imagine, imagine you bring that into your marriage and start to leave your marriage on globals. It will decay. It will, it, will, it, will, it will get out of use. It will fail. It will fail. No wonder when it comes to divorcement in the New Testament, it could only be added under Moses, which is the law. The Bible says Jesus said that divorcement was allowed under Moses because of the hardness of your heart. It could not have been so with Christ. And that's why in scripture he adds and says, but that was not so from the beginning. It was not so from the beginning. It was never the mind of God from the beginning. So it even breaks me when I hear that, that in that day and age, people are, de uh, no, 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 people are debating whether a man or a woman are supposed to live together or not. Where people are divorcing, whether a divorce is wrong or, or people are actually debating. I'm not judging those that are divorced or divorced. No, I don't know the state of your face. I cannot judge each person and all their reasons. All right? Even in scripture, you know, some of you could have your own reasons and I'm not judging them. But I'm not saying it was never that. But what I'm trying to say is it was never the idea of God for men to divorce. It was never the idea, right? So when I hear even some people say, oh no, you know, it's, 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 it's a lie, show me what it's, what you live together, and amen. Okay? God's mind, he said, this is because men hardened their hearts. But if our hearts were soft, Okay? Forgiveness will take place. And if what forgiveness is, reconciliation will accept. In the scripture, of course, there are those uh, conditions, those very clear ones. For example, if somebody says that for me, I'm not ready to live with you because you're born again. Okay? Yeah, you, you're allowed to separate with them. And that's clear. Jesus gave that, those exceptions and says, look, if somebody says, I'm not ready to live with you because you're born again. Well, you're All right? That's, that's, that's the issue. <sighs> so yes, my people, I'm done putting my nephew to sleep. Now I'm going to start doing the chores, washing his clothes and all that. <laughs> yeah, that is how we make our African babies go to sleep. And yes, tell me, what do you think? What do you think about the video how we do it how we wrap them on our bags you can comment down below if you're in ghana africa i like my people from ghana <laughs> the only place i know in ghana is accra and takradi because wadema is from takradi and i've watched videos from takradi and i made some awesome sweet soul like and she told me I'm from Takradi. I watch your videos. Oh, Ghana people, thank you so much. And if you're from Nigeria, Kenya, India, all my people from USA, all my people, oh, you guys, you're showing me love. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, guys, let me leave you, my people. Comment down below. And thank you so much for watching this video. Until now, like, comment, and subscribe. The subscribe. <laughs> bye bye. Who likes banana plantations? Oh, we have banana coming up there. We have another banana. We have banana. I don't know if you're seeing the banana coming up. The banana. <laughs> and another one over there. Let's see. And another one is coming over here. You know, Uganda, we are called the Republic of Matoke. We have a little plantation. 
of banana here. Some of you call it plantain. It is too young. Oops, and who likes alvera? We have a lot of alvera here. We have a lot of alvera. Have a lot of alvera. Yes, we have that moringa, then another banana, and this one is too young. Banana, banana, banana. 